In today's video, I'm gonna break down how to get wider vocals in your mix. Are you ready? Let's go. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Five Piece Producer and Engineer Extraordinaire. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to break down some tips and tricks around creating wider vocals. I'm going to use a specific example here and cover a few different things. So let's just jump right in. So I've got a song here called Lifestyle Investor by my guy Stamina featuring Oscar Sharp. We might be remastering this in the moment, but if it's available, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Otherwise, I'll update this later so you guys can listen to it if you like what you're hearing. But first, I'm gonna just play you what I ended up creating here, and I'm gonna show you a few different things that I've done, as well as some additional strategies that I haven't implemented yet in order to achieve a wider vocal sound without having to do a whole bunch of re-recording or adding additional things after the fact. So just check this out, here's the example. Lifestyle investor, live life my terms, yeah. Come on, on fait ça en investissement pour prendre des coups sans souci des sous. Lead mindset, we level up our whole crew, pushing our limits like we driving off a coup. Got my whole team, Liberty brought the vibes of the room. Locked in, we don't believe we step up, make the rules. Rules. Facile à dire, mais dur à réaliser. J'ai continué quand elle veut tout lâcher Célébrer la vie et bien en profiter Yeah Okay, I'm gonna pause it there for now, but hopefully you guys get a little bit of an idea. I just played Stamina's verse here, and I love, by the way, the bilingual nature of this song, how he's going from the English to the French and back and forth, but that's neither here nor there. So there's a few things that I've done in this song to just get a little bit of a wider vocal sound. And what I first want to do is I'm gonna just solo his vocal so we can really focus for a moment here. And the first thing that I wanna highlight is I actually put a chorus plugin directly on to his vocal here in the chain. And that's not something that I always do, but what I'm using here is Arturia's Chorus June 6. It's like a Juno chorus emulation type of plugin. And again, I rarely do this. This is somewhat breaking rules in a way, because um, a lot of times people add choruses directly to instrument sounds, guitars and whatnot, or they'll put it on ascend. This is also how I like to use it. I like to put it on ascend so that I have more control over it. However, in this case, I have it directly on the vocal. Mind you, it's later in the chain. It's like after all my DSing and EQs and compression and stuff like that. I do have a few things that follow it, but those things are really not doing a whole lot except for just lifting things a little bit. In the case of my mag EQ, just adding some high end and whatnot. And then my clipper, just making sure that this doesn't clip and, you know, reach beyond digital zero. But in this case, the chorus is basically the third last plugin. And I want to do that on purpose because if I put it in earlier, if I put compression and stuff after, it might really mess some stuff up and just create some smeary type of sounds. I want to avoid that. So I got a chorus on here and whether you're using this or a different one, it doesn't really matter. It's about the intention. And I'm using this by adding about a 30% mix in. So it's not fully wet. It's not fully chorused out. What it's doing is it's just adding a touch of this chorus so that that way you're getting a little bit of a wider kind of sound from the actual vocal, which by the way is a mono vocal. So let's just take this in first. I'm gonna just take it out and put it in. Lifestyle investor, live life my terms, yeah. Come on, on fait ça en investissement pour prendre des coups sans souci des sous. Leap mindset, we level up our whole crew. Pushing our limits like we driving off a coup. Got my whole team, Larry brought the vibes to the room. Locked in, we don't play, we step up, make the rules. Rules. So hopefully you can hear what it's doing. It's basically like when I have it out, the vocal just feels a lot more like dead center mono, maybe like a little more flat, so to speak. I don't know if that's really the right way to describe it, but when I put the chorus in, it just sort of opens it up, makes it a little bit more present in the stereo field. Now, I know that some people love to comment, oh, why do you have the effects on? The effects are affecting how I'm hearing it. All right, I got you. So let me go up here. Let me mute my effects real quick one time. 
and play this again and do that same AB so you can hear it without my effects, without my reverbs and stuff, which by the way, really are enhancing the width and we'll talk about that. But let's just focus on what this chorus plugin is doing on the dry vocal. Here we go. Lifestyle, Live life, my terms, yeah. Come on, on fait sans investissement pour prendre des coups sans souci des sous. Leap mindset, we level up our whole crew. Pushing our limits like we driving off a coupe. Got my whole team, Larry brought the vibes to the room. Like so I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit, it is a little bit more subtle when you hear it in this capacity, right? But you do still hear that it is opening up the vocals, so to speak. So this first tip is obviously just suggesting that you add a chorus plugin. I know people might be curious what kinds of settings and whatnot to create. This is entirely up to you. I actually like this plugin because you can kind of play with a few different parameters from the rate to the depth to the phase. But as you can see, I haven't really changed a whole lot here. I'm really just using this first curve and just dialing in these settings. And a lot of times I am keeping it tempo synced. So that way, you know, things don't get too weird or off tempo, etc. But I highly recommend implementing a chorus directly onto that channel, that main vocal channel in this case, to just open it up a little bit. And again, don't go crazy with the mix. Don't make it super slammed and wide open so that it's fully stereo. Add a little bit so that way it's not so concentrated into the center and now just opening up in a little bit more on the left and right channels while still also being very focused and in the center. Now another thing that you probably have figured out is really making this track sound a lot wider is the effects, right? The reverbs, the delays, etc. And the reverbs especially are allowing this stereo kind of impact to happen. And it's kind of obvious this is a melodic rap kind of track and we can get away with being extremely generous on the reverb and stuff because it lends itself well to that. However, if you're trying to have a very intimate sound that's very forward with the vocal, you may not necessarily be able to use this next part. But what I'm also ultimately doing is I'm really slamming a few different reverbs here. So let's just check out what I got going on. Live life, my terms, yeah. And you see I'm using this EMT 140. This is really doing some of that heavy lifting in terms of the reverb sound. And let's actually just solo this and mute my delays real quick so you can hear exactly what it's doing. Lifestyle, star, live life, my terms, yeah. Right, so you can kind of hear what it's doing, hopefully, with your ears. I'm not asking you to look at any, any parameters here yet. I just want to make sure you're able to distinctly hear what's happening. But reverb in itself really lives in the left and right channels. This is typically where reverb ends up, and that's why I like to use it. By adding reverb to a sound, or a vocal in this case, you're able to essentially fill the left and right channels more because that's where it's concentrated. It's concentrated in the stereo field and not so much in the mid section or the mono section right some reverbs are good at that like a spring reverb is definitely much more mono compatible but a reverb like this being a plate this is a UAD uh, EMT 140 uh, this one is obviously going to be much more focused in the stereo field and as you could tell there's a stereo section here and I have my width pushed all the way you know, to 100%, so that way we're maximizing how wide this is gonna sound. And the benefit of that is it allows the actual original vocal sound, the original thing that I just showed you, it's concentrated in the center, like I said, and this reverb is therefore gonna fill the left and right channels. Again, I'm not gonna go super deep into parameters here, I just want you to be aware that you should be using some sort of reverb, typically a plate or a hall, and then concentrate that into the left and right channels, either with a parameter that allows you to to do that so it focuses there or you can always of course put on a stereo imager plugin and push that even more as an example here's a hall verb and I'm not using it in this session but I do usually put some sort of stereo width plugin and you can see I'm really pushing that width generally of course I'm not using it here and I might fine-tune it but I am going to push the width of the reverb if I don't have that control on the actual reverb plugin, so that way it really does fill the left and right channels and allows the middle to be wide open, obviously, for the mono vocal in the center. Now, another thing that I did in terms of making this vocal wider is I actually played with some of the panning, and I did that specifically on this sort of ad-lib section that I separated 
uh, from the main vocal, which is obviously what he used. But you could see here there's moments where I'm actually automating the panning on specific parts so that it kind of floats across. And even though it's a single vocal going left and right or right and left, whichever direction you decide to automate it in, what that does is it gives you this illusion that things are wider because it's sort of filling the entire stereo field. And at the same time, it's a good way to just add some sauce to a specific sound. Now, of course, you're not gonna just constantly pan everything, right? You're not going to pan your verse as an example. You want that to be very much focused and in the middle, but you might be able to get away with ad libs or certain embellishments and panning them. Whether you do it dynamically where it's something that kind of moves throughout the song, right? Or maybe it's something where it's like this ad lib is more on the right, this ad lib is more on the left, and they kind of go back and forth and move with some very delicate and careful automation. Let's check out this specific section so you can see what I'm talking about. We don't play, we step up, make the rules. Hopefully you can understand what I'm saying here and you could just definitely tell again It's one vocal but because of the movement and the way that it does it kind of gives you this illusion Especially when stacked with these other plugins and these effects that things are wider than they actually are now while I've given you a few strategies here. Maybe this isn't enough for you Maybe you you know can't go crazy with the reverbs Maybe you don't really have a whole lot that is worth panning. Maybe it doesn't make sense to add a chorus plugin to your vocal track. It's totally understandable. This is situational stuff, and this is not stuff that I do every single time, right? And let's say that you're somebody that does not have the option of re-recording vocals or creating stacks, but you still want to create a wider sound. Well, one thing that you could do that's very interesting is you can actually duplicate tracks, and you're not just going to duplicate them and pan them, but what you're going to do is you're going to duplicate them and create some spatial differences, timing differences, really, and then pan those. So you're creating different timing and then different panning that allows everything to feel much wider. Now, this is always going to be a situational thing, but let me just show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to take this track and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to have two of them and I'll leave the active playlist, but what I'll do is I'll get rid of my uh, inserts and maybe I'll leave my sends actually in my automation, but let's just get rid of the inserts so that way there's not too much plugin stuff happening. And bam, we have it all. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to delete this first part so we have some room ahead and behind. And I'm going to grab everything here, at least on this first track. I'll pan it left. And what I'm going to do is if I press the comma quick key, right, on my keyboard, it's going to nudge it just a millisecond to the left, right? And you can actually also determine your nudge in Pro Tools here, right? But 1 64th of a note is what I'm doing, which even might be too much. I could even be a little bit more specific with frames or, or uh, samples or any of that stuff, depending on how I want to do this time code even. But I'm moving this first one to the left, so it's a little bit earlier, okay? And then the second one, I'm going to pan it to the right, and I'm, of course, going to take it and pan it. Sorry, not pan it. I'm going to move it to the right, nudge it to the right. And I do that by pressing the period button on my keyboard. I'm not sure exactly how you would do it otherwise, but I like using the quick keys. Quick keys are the keys to the kingdom, make things very easy for you. So I do that. So all I've done is, and again, you can maybe do this manually even by clicking and dragging, but I've taken one, panned it left, right? And I've taken this one, and I panned it right, but then I've also taken the top one and moved it nudge it slightly to the left so it's a little bit earlier and taking the bottom one that's panned to the right and I've moved it to the right even I've nudged it to the right ever so slightly so that way it starts a little bit later and as you can imagine this is creating three different uh, timings on this now of course this could potentially create some phase issues depending on your stuff so you want to listen to it carefully but let me take this now and I'm actually going to group this and call them doubles and now I can actually control the volume of both and I'm going to just find the right level to set it to. But if I just literally solo this, let's just hear how much wider this is by doing this effect that I've done here. Lifestyle, investor, live life, my terms, yeah. Comment on fait ça en investissement pour prendre des coups sans souci des sous. Leap mindset, we level up our whole crew, pushing... All right, so I'm not going to lie to you. It's obviously significantly louder in the process, right? Um, and that's obviously not something we want. We are, we're going to have to manage the volume of this as well, which is why I'm taking this and maybe turning it down, making sure my volume automation doesn't affect some of this in the first place. But then finding the right blend so that way this one is still the lead, but then of course making sure that these are still present enough and creating that width. But you can hear the spatial difference. You can hear how it sounds significantly wider and bigger as a result of doing this. So I definitely recommend 
taking this if you really want to have some wider vocals. So now that I've turned this down a little bit more, let's actually hear it one more time and see if it's better balanced. Lifestyle, investor, live life, my terms, yeah. Come on, on fait sans investissement, pour prendre des coups sans souci des sous. Leap mindset, we level up our whole crew, pushing our limits like we driving off a coup. Got my whole team, let me brought the vibes of the room, locked in. So it's much more subtle right now in this particular case, as you can tell. And I haven't even added any plugins, there's no EQ, there's no compression, there's nothing really going on to these duplicate channels. I highly advise doing that, of course. But what I'm ultimately saying is just by duplicating, creating these timing differences, you'll be able to actually sort of create this illusion of width. And also, of course, panning them is going to really accentuate that and make this much more noticeable. Now, these are a few strategies that I have that I've implemented on this particular track. Some of them may be better than others to you, but I'm curious to know what did you find most helpful in this video? Leave it in the comments below and let me know if you try any of this stuff and it works for you. I'd love to know. If you got any widening tips of your own, definitely leave them in the comments below as well so you can help others, myself included, because as much as I'm doing this and showing you guys, I'm learning at the same time. I love to continue to learn and get better at mixing with every track that I do. I appreciate you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. I drop a new piece of content every single week. Always focus on helping you sound better and helping you make more money with your music. And if you can, please like this video so that way other people like yourself can see it and benefit from this knowledge. I appreciate you guys for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all on the next one. Peace. Five.